Welcome back to the Redeeming Real Estate Podcast. Once again, my name is Robbie Osinga. And I'm BJ Armstrong. Um, I, actually, this is a special week because it's um, this is my birthday week. Ooh. Um, oh, what, yeah. What's special is that it's also my dad's birthday week. Cause, so we were, we were Congratulations. Born, on, born on the same day. Right? No on way. October 5th. Right? Isn't that awesome? That's Wow. You guys yeah. are more special than I thought. Well, where else would you come up with the name like BJ? It's Brian Jr. There you go. So there you go. Or it's Man. like second, first and second, Brian. You can treat us that way if you choose. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> so who is this guy? So this is my dad. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and what's awesome about him and, and the reason that, that we wanted him to join the conversation today is because it really is a story of my life. This is how I started. I, there's Every day I like to wake up and think I'm really a self-made man. And, right? and, 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 it's a bold-faced and that's, lie. Yeah. And that's really not true. <laughs> so when I stop and face reality, I do figure out that, hey, I did have a head start in life. Yeah. And and I had that head start because of my dad because he was always positive and upward and always bathed everything in love. Right? I mean there was there was never any question. So I had uh, so I had friends that called us the Brady Bunch. Oh, that's cool. right. But yeah, which was I don't know if that was a compliment. Maybe that was kind of a backhanded. I don't know. I think it's good. All right, good. So I'm I'm treated I treated <laughs> it as good. But that's where it is. So I really I invited him to the conversation today yep. as a. Let's see how he did it. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. Well, pretty early on in our our conversations, BJ, it became clear that um, obviously no one no one hits it uh, exactly one hundred percent right right out of the gate. And there were, there was a, a season of your life uh, that uh, was affected in one way because of the way your dad was chasing a real estate and a building career, and then there was a switch that happened mm-hmm. at some point in time, and then things looked differently. And and both before and after that switch has dramatically affected your approach to what you're doing now. And so I'm, I'm excited to get to hear more about that story from both perspectives and, uh, and kind of see where it goes from there. So on our, la- on our first podcast, we had kind of talked about your legacy as a family, mm-hmm. third generation. Well, we've got two of those three generations sitting here with us, uh, knowing that your family came from out in the Fairbury area, uh, mm-hmm. and you and your brothers got into Bloomington Normal and started helping out with your dad. Why don't you pick up the story from there in terms of career and family and, and kind of uh, getting into Bloomington Normal and getting going. What was going on? What were you working on? What What were your goals that you were that you were as a young <laughs> entrepreneur, <laughs> real estate, you know, worker, all that kind of stuff that, that got you going? Yeah. Um. Yeah, well, that's a that's an interesting question. I I want to have all these great ideas that I they had these plans and <laughs> and I had this. Uh, mission statement and all they said, I had none of those. Yeah. <laughs> what I really wanted to do, or I decided somewhere along the line, I just wanted to be a wealthy guy. Okay. You know, that, and that was it. I, so I thought, I'll do whatever that takes to get there. And what did that take at that and so, stage of life? Yeah, so early on, um, you know, I worked construction a little bit during the summers in high school, and I, um, uh, we, got, we got married in 1966. Okay. So at that time, my dad had moved to Bloomington. He was uh, actually starting a brand new career. So okay. he he was in a, a, the grain business back in Fairbury, Illinois. Uh, when that came to an end, when Kennedy came into uh, uh, office, he stopped the grain storage thing, and it and it made caused a change. So at about forty five years old, I think he moved to Bloomington, started all over. Oh wow! And found a couple of builders that he worked with. Uh, worked, got his real estate license, and then just started to bloom through there. I, and I think one of the things he said to himself is, "Hey, I can do this myself. You know, yeah. I don't, I don't need to continue on with you guys. I appreciate your help, but I, <laughs> but I can yeah. do it." And uh, I was uh, when we first got married. I lived in Clear Lake, Iowa. Okay. I, I was traveling for a, a manufacturer that did. Uh, farm equipment and and enhance the farm equipment. So I traveled 14 counties up there for about three, four years. And uh, uh, that was good, but I got a call one day from dad and said, uh, hey, Vic's back, Vic, your brother's back here. Uh, we're working together and would you want to come? Hmm. And and I jumped at the opportunity thinking that, you know, here's, here's my opportunity to make my dream come true. Yeah. So we came back and, and had some, uh, it, it was actually a real good time in the early 70s. Uh, money was available. We were building student apartments uh, kind of as fast as we knew how to do that. Yeah. And 
in the same time manage him running running all those things okay, it, well. it was just a, a full-time deal going on learn and you know kind of learning as you go yeah. getting that together so uh, did that and and sold real estate along with that and then uh, eventually started building single family construction and uh, that became a big a big part of the business so I would say from the standpoint of what I was looking for it was very I was very successful yeah. I, you know uh, from a financial standpoint found great success in that and, and uh, had everything I needed so mm. y- you show up somewhere in the middle of this, right? You know what's funny? Just <laughs> talking, I and I haven't. I can't tell you. I have not thought about this for a really, really long time. But I, one of the things that always challenged me, right, is you would always say, um, you you always talk about having a million dollars by the time you were thirty, mm. right? And and you want to talk about something that challenges a kid mm. or or a son, right? I mean, yeah. and and gives you something that says, hey, here's a here's this is the bar, yeah, right? And so and I. I kind of knew where the bar was. If yeah. you, so that was common that speak. Oh well, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, what I remember about our conversations mm. often was, if we were in the car together, it would generally revolve around business mm. and, and generally about money. Yeah, think and grow rich. I remember that book yeah. on, on oh. your on his on the nightstand. So. I had to read all that stuff to stay inspired. But <laughs> one of one of the things that encouraged me from and and, and I think Dad did it in kind of a joking way. Yeah. But he said, uh, whether you're rich or whether you're poor, you can't beat having money. And, and you know, <laughs> in, in my mind, that just gets stuck in there. That's, mm-hmm. So I think that's all there is. Yeah. And if I work hard and, and devote myself to that 100%, yeah. that, that that's what will happen. So, so here's the thing uh, with that. I've, so my priorities yeah. in life were my job. I always, I always figured there ought to be three priorities: my job, my job, and my job. Okay. And hold obviously. on, give me that order again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I was heavy focus on uh, yeah. work. Well, and that on work. that that kind of picks up from how I I picked up on this story, and um, so t- you you show up in the middle of my job, my job, and my job. Yeah. Well, where where we spent a lot of time together was. On his job. Yeah, you talk about the, honestly, the walkie-talkie and all, yeah. In fact, if you read my website, day one on my website, I wrote the little bio that says, Here, here's who I am. And, and honestly, what I remember more than anything is Saturday morning going and hanging out with Dad on the job site, right? Right around this, the dirtiest pickup truck you've ever seen. But, but <laughs> you ride around on the pickup truck and you talk on the radio and you go see the job site and you talk to the carpenters. And it, was, it was a blast. I, I wouldn't change a second of that. Yeah. I mean, it's not, it may, may not be most kids. Mm-hmm. Childhood, but I wouldn't change second of it. Right. Yeah. Um, but inherently, at some point in time, job, 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 mm-hmm. and family, and mm-hmm. other responsibilities, and other your role and in, involved in your church, and all those kind of things. Something, something had to come to a head, and something eventually <coughs> just wasn't <coughs> jiving. And, and I want to get into that um, next, but uh, that we're going to get into that in kind of on our next sure. podcast. Okay. But to kind of tie a bow on this conversation right now, um, when you were in that job, job, job <laughs> pursuit, did it feel right? Did you have any sense that you were heading in a direction that might not be sustainable or that might not be heading the way that you want to go or did it seem like green lights keep keep mm-hmm. heading in that direction sure it oh, for a long time it was green lights yeah and there was a point i you know i i i peg it at about 42 45 years old i went wow is that all there is hmm. and uh that's that's an awakening at that point so you, i start searching at that point talks about the book setting you know anything to uh, create that mindset that uh, I can do this. You know, I want to keep doing it, and yeah. uh, to to just kind of pump me up right. uh, again to go to that next step. Yeah. Well, and BJ, we we talk a lot about the 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 industry of real estate being broken, <clears throat> and I think a lot of consumers mm-hmm. probably look at a lot of successful people in the real estate industry, and they they identify those three priorities as well in terms of without job or money or whatever without a doubt yeah what <laughs> how's, how's that working out <laughs> for the industry and for <clears throat> well I when you when you hear we talk one the last time or whenever about um, real estates being compared to used car sales that's that's why I mean essentially you can go and pick out right now people that are in this business for the money um, and it shows up everywhere. 
And what happens is the industry is changing now with technology so fast. And so when, it, when the consumer all of a sudden gets a choice and says, I can either go work with that clown or I can go online and go and just find my own thing, what happens? They go, well, I'll do it myself because I don't want that guy right. in my life. And, and, and I totally get that. And if I spin that even through construction, you look at the number of just crook contractors that are out there. Yeah. Right. I mean, there are there are guys that will that will do things that are unmentionable, right? And that's where it stems from, right? Right. I gotta redeem myself a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, you weren't you weren't an evil tyrant. Well, you know, and I think there is there's cases like that. Yeah, I wanted those things, mm-hmm. but part of our whole process was that we really did have a, a excellent product. We did have excellent follow up. Agree. Yeah. Everything I did, it would break my heart not to do a good job for whoever is working for. So that was all part of right. it. That yeah. was all part of it. It, was, it wasn't all me, me, me. <laughs> That's true. Uh, yeah. I, I, and also I love that he says that because, because I think that shows up more than anything, even though on the surface, here's right. what happens in America, yeah. right? Is on the surface, we look at everything and we go, Hey, it's all about the things. Yeah. And the reality is, is it's not what he just revealed is that his heart was not about the dollars that was that was as much the recognition of hey we've done this really awesome job as it, as it was anything else right but but it also becomes a driving force it easily gets flipped flipped upside down mm-hmm. yeah it is and it's a slippery slope and that's again why we're having these conversations yeah. and just trying to add more value in the lives of people and helping to to keep them heading in the right direction rather than mm-hmm. it what you're talking about is a one or two or three degree shift that over the course of a career and a lifetime starts to really head you off in a different direction, right? Mm-hmm. And so that's that's where we're going to pick up on, on the next podcast. We're going to finish that story. We're going to hear about what that switch that kind of got flipped and then what happened as a result for okay. you and then how that uh, changed some things for you, BJ. Does that sound like a plan? Sounds good. All right. Well, until next time, uh, thanks again for checking in on the Redeeming Real Estate podcast. And uh, we look forward to picking this conversation up again uh, next week.